I said to him, Jackson, that tree. <laughs> hey, Refuge. Man, I know it's not Christmas time yet, but we just wanted to take advantage of celebrating Christmas with you right now. Is that right, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, right. Let's go. I mean, you may be thinking to yourself, it's a little early for Christmas, right? Mm. But to that I say, is it ever too early to celebrate the birth of my Lord and Savior? Oh, cheers to that, man. <laughs> cheers. So, oh, man. Yeah, that's all great. <laughs> well, tonight we still mm. have a fun night for you guys. This is going to be the last Wednesday night refuge oh. meeting of the semester. <laughs> so make sure to be earning points in the game that we're going to play. And then we will uh, announce the winners of this year, but we will still pick it up next semester. So earn these points tonight and make mm. it count. Yeah, and then we're going to have our bro Jackson come in and he's going to be speaking the last message of the year on exile. And we're super excited about that. Yeah, it's gonna be great. This is our last, mm. this is our last one of the, of the year. So let's be there, let's make a count. We've got a party mm. next week for Thanksmas. We're combining the holidays. It's gonna be great. It's a wonderful but time. But we'd love to see you there. So to all, happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Good night. Our Refuge, well, I am so excited to be with you guys preaching the last message in the Old Testament for our Word Awaken series. Uh, we, we're going, we're heading back into it uh, next semester. So in January, we'll be in the New Testament. But um, yeah, I'm glad to be with you guys um, as you guys are sitting in your homes. Uh, there's something special about home, right? Uh, there's something special about just feeling comfortable in this in this specific place, right? I mean, you guys are you guys might be reclining on your on your beds right now, or sitting on the couch, or whatever it is. But when you walk in the doors of your home, um, a lot of times you feel comfortable, you feel relaxed, you feel free. Um, I know for me, there's something special about my bed at home, right? Like, yeah, I can go and I can sleep in, in other places, whether that's with friends or family or whatever, uh, or like maybe the feeling when you come home from a long road trip and you get to lay in bed and you're just like this feeling of just relief, right? It's amazing. Um, and there's something just special about home and all the feels that that brings us. Um, but it, it's different when we're away from home. And sometimes when we're away from home for a while, we get homesick. We, we, we wish that we could be back where we're comfortable, back where we feel like we belong. Um, and that's where the Israelites found themselves um, during the exile. Today, we're going to be talking about the Israelites and how they um, had to be uh, pushed out of Jerusalem, pushed out of the, the land that, they had, that God had given them. Uh, because of their disobedience and, and how they're supposed to live in exile, how they're supposed to live in this land that is not their own. Because guys, right now, um, we are not in, in, in our homes. We are away from our home and our home is heaven. So by being on this earth, that means that, that we are strangers and sojourners. It talks about that in 1 Peter, that we are strangers on this world where we were made for heaven. If we were made for heaven, that means that when we are here, we are we're exiles um, and we're trying to find our way to heaven, right? Everyone always thinks that there's something more. I know that probably in your life, you felt like, man, I know there's something more than just this life that I'm living right now. And to tell you, that's true. That's very true. Um, and so today we're going to talk about um, the, it, the exile of Israel um, and how that reflects back on us and how we're supposed to live our lives today, um, looking towards our future home, our true home in heaven. So let me pray for us before we head into it. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to look into your word, Lord. Um, God, I pray that as we dive into this text that is um, not commonly taught in uh in, in, in church, Lord, that, that we're able to um, get a grander scheme of, of what the Bible is, Lord, that we're able to, you're able to open up our minds and we're able to see your word for what it is um, and see how we should live because of it, God. So Lord, uh, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you speak through me um, and we're just able to understand the word that you have for us today, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, um, I want to kind of recap um, what where we've been, because this is the last Old Testament passage that we're going through. Um, and so at the beginning, and really I'm just starting at the beginning, um, Adam and Eve were put in the garden. 
Um, and, and they were there under one condition that they were they would obey God and that they would not sin. But what did they do? They sinned. And so God exiled them out. When they were exiled out, then they were strangers in their land. They were, the, and from then on, humanity was not where they belong. But we see that in a more real sense with Israel. So Israel, we had seen before that God promised to bring Israel to the promised land, right? That was Canaan, which became, uh, which Jerusalem um, is in that land, in Israel. Um, and, and God promised that he would bring them there through Moses, right? And Moses led them to the promised land uh, and they went in and they, but then once they got to the promised land, they fell into a cycle. They would sin and then they would, God would send a judge and they would come back and praise God. Then they would fall into it again and again and again and again. Um, and then they tried to solve their problems and tried to solve their sin by a, appointing a king. And that's when King Saul came in, King David. And then from then on, there were a ton of different kings. Um, some of these kings were good. A lot of them were bad. And it's just the sin that is seen throughout the Bible is insane. And, and, and just how God continues to still work is amazing. Um, but uh, the, the sin in, in the kingdom and the complications and the troubles and the turmoil that had happened eventually caused that kingdom to split into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And um, all this happened. There was so much going on. Israel was disobeying the Lord. They were not unified. And so God said, you know what? Um, I've warned you guys that this would happen through the prophets. We learned about that with Grantham last week. I warned you guys that this would happen. And so now you are going to go into exile. God allowed them to be sent into exile. And that's point number one in your notes is God exiled the Israelites because of their disobedience. God exiled the Israelites because of their disobedience. See, God allowed them to be sent into another land. Um, but he put them through this punishment um, because he loved them. Because he, he didn't want them to, to fall into what they did. And so he sent them to um, Babylon to, to teach them the lesson that they needed to learn. Uh, that they needed to be faithful to God. Now Babylon, um, introducing Babylon right now. Um, they came in, they attacked the Israelites in Jerusalem, took them out of Jerusalem and brought them to their land of Babylon. Um, and there, once they got to Babylon, they were oppressed. They were, they were seen as the lower rung of, uh, of the totem pole. They did not live comfortable, um, easy lives. Um, in fact, they lived really difficult lives because they were under the oppression and the reign of the Babylonian empire. Um, and they were not at home. Now that's hard because they were pulled from their home and where they were comfortable, where they felt like life was easy, life was good, and they were brought to a land that they were completely unfamiliar with. And, and, and once they got to Babylon, Babylon, the Babylonian empire wanted them to start adopting their lifestyle. They wanted them to worship their gods and they wanted them to live the lives that they lived. And they wanted them to have a different value system that they had before. Or before they should have valued God and lived for him, right? But now Babylon wanted them to value their gods and live the way that they were living. And so um, they were not in their home and they were being pulled by Babylon. Now there's, today, there is a new Babylon pulling at us. And what I mean by that is um, the Babylonian empire was trying to get them to have new values, right? They were trying to get them off the track that they were on and adopt a different lifestyle. And today, there are so many different things that are pulling at our worship, that are pulling at our lives saying, hey, you shouldn't live your life for the Lord. No, you should live your life for yourself. Or you should live your life to be the most talented athlete that you can be. Or you should live your life, the main goal of your life should be the best you can be at school, right? Um, or, or you should be the most popular. Whatever it is, there are things in this world that are pulling at our attention, that are pulling at our worship, and that want us to give everything we have to them. Um, but we know that God has has a higher calling on us, right? And so um, how do we respond? Well, point number two in your notes is that God tells us how he wants us 
to respond. Um, point number two is God has a plan for us within exile. You see, God didn't just put the Israelites into the hands of Babylon and just say, man, okay, I got them out of my way. Um, let's see let's see what happens and forget about them. No, he didn't do that at all. In fact, he had a plan for them. He told them exactly how he wanted them to live. But how were they living? See, the Israelites went one of two ways um, when they entered um, captivity, when they entered exile. Um, and they... They either gave in to Babylon and worshiped their gods and lived the lifestyle they lived and just completely caved, or they went the opposite way and they rebelled and they tried to overthrow the government and they said, this is, this is dumb and we need to, to, to try and get out of here. They just completely rebelled and, and tried to hurt Babylon. Um, but God... Uh, had a different calling on them on how he wanted them to live. And it's actually uh, completely different from both of those. And so um, in Jeremiah 29, we see that call. See, Jeremiah, um, Grantham talked about the book of Jeremiah last week, um, but I want to point out one thing. that Jeremiah, he was talking specifically to the exiles in Israel. That was his audience. And so when he um, was, was speaking to the, to the Israelites in exile, um, what he wanted to tell them was, hey, God has a way that he wants you to live. Um, and so in chapter 29 of, the, of Jeremiah, verses 4 through 7, Jeremiah tells Israel of a specific command. He says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is God speaking through Jeremiah. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare. That's so interesting to hear that, that Jeremiah didn't say, hey, Babylon is bad. You got to get out of there. You need to rebel, overthrow the government, get out of there. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say, hey, you're there. Just live by their rules, adopt their style of living, worship their gods. No, he didn't say that either. He said, get comfortable. Hey, you're here, but Babylon is not the enemy. You are the reason that you ended up in Babylon. You're the reason that you ended up in exile. And so don't look at Babylon and try and overthrow them. They're lost, but they're not the enemy. See, your own sin is the enemy. But while you are here, get comfortable. Build houses. Live in your house. Like, like live life like you normally would. Have kids. Eat, eat food. Like, be normal. Um, but he said, seek the welfare of the city that I've sent you into exile. So don't hate Babylon. Don't hate the world that you live in, but want, the, want good for the world that you live in. You should genuinely desire that good things happen in your world. Um, he said, and pray, for the, for, uh, pray to the Lord on its behalf. Don't um, wish poorly upon Babylon, but pray for Babylon to God. See, he says that um, he says that you shouldn't try and rebel, you shouldn't give in, but you should be loyal to improving the world that you live in, to improving Babylon, but stand up for the truth. And so, see, God never called them away from their way of living. He didn't call them uh, to. He called them not to give in. Um, and he didn't call them to turn away from how they were worshiping God already. And we see that through the life of Daniel um, in the book of Daniel. Uh, the book of Daniel is a story of Daniel, like I've said, throughout the time of exile. He was an Israelite living in exile in Babylon. And so we see how all the crazy things that happen in his life and, and how Daniel is used by God throughout this entire time. Um, and we see just his story. And so uh, Daniel drew the line a lot of the time where he said, okay, um, I will want the, the best for Babylon. I will contribute towards the good of Babylon and towards the people who have me in exile. Um, but I'm not going to, to cave in to the worship that they want me to do. 
I'm not going to cave into their false gods. And so we actually see that in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, you guys have probably heard this story before, but King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, set up this golden image. And he said, whenever you hear the sound of these instruments, you need to bow down wherever you are to this golden idol. Um, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, no, we're not going to bow down to your idol, for we will only bow down to our God, the one true God. And because of that, uh, eventually Nebuchadnezzar put them in a fire. They didn't burn because God was with them. Um, but because of all that, because of the faith that they showed, King Nebuchadnezzar said, oh my gosh, this God that they serve is real. And so by them drawing the line, by them saying, hey, we are going to want the best for this, for Babylon, but we're not going to, uh, to worship your gods. Uh, God was able to use that and use their way of living so that uh, for the good of Babylon and for their good as well. And so God used their faithfulness to show and amplify his name above anything else. And so what about us? Like I said before, we're not in our home. Heaven is our home and we are here. We're strangers and sojourners in this world. Um, how should we live? Well, we shouldn't give in to the false idols of this world. We shouldn't give in to the way this world wants us to live. Um, but we also shouldn't hate this world. And we shouldn't um, just complain about it and, and want um, bad things to happen to people. Um, no, we should want the good of this world, um, but stand up for the truth. We are to be loyal to improving the world we live in and the world that God has given us, but stand up for the truth. And so we need to have a balance there. And we can't have just one. We can't have just the other, but we need to have a balance. See, we cannot give in to the Babylon of today, of all these different pressures that are trying to get us to cave in. No, we need to stay true, to stand up for what we know God has called us to, the life that he has called us to live. Um, and we, but we also need to be loyal to improving this world that we live in. See, God has called us, uh, right now heaven is our home, right? He's called us there, uh, but we are here right now. And so he has not called us to just say, hey, forget the world that you live in, only be focused on heaven. He said, no, make earth like heaven. Make this place more like heaven, and as good as you can make it. Make it as holy as you can make it. Um, um, share the gospel with people and, and make this place more like heaven heaven. See, we're not supposed to just forget about this world and not care about it. We are supposed to invest in this world and make it the best place that it can be. And so um, that leads to point number three, um, which is Jesus is the way out of exile. See, we're in exile or the Israelites are in exile. Life is not good. In fact, um, they were in Babylon, right? Um, and then they eventually got out of Babylon, went back to Jerusalem, but Jerusalem was no longer the home that they had thought it was. In fact, other nations had come in um, and taken over. And so when they went back to Jerusalem, they were still in exile because they were still under the reign of another nation. They were not their own. They were not um, comfortable and, and protected in that way to where they could be um, just their own nation, Israel. And so they were continuing to be in exile. Um, but as we've seen in all these prophets, and one thing that Grantham mentioned last week is that these prophets promised a savior. See, as they were in exile, they said, hey, this isn't the end, guys, but a savior is going to come and he's going to save you and bring you out of exile. And how sweet would that have been to hear? So what do you think that they were expecting? They were probably expecting this warrior king to just come karate chopping out of the clouds, right? And, and come down and rain fire on these other nations like Rome, like just, just take down Rome, um, which is the, the, the nation that, was, uh, that had Israel in captivity during the time of Jesus. Um, I mean, they were waiting for this savior to come, but, but what came? And like, we're, I mean, we were talking about Christmas, right? A baby came that was not born into a family of, um, of riches or of power. Um, he was born into, into the, he was the son of a carpenter. And so, well, he's the son of God, but his dad, his earthly father, was a carpenter. And so he did not make a lot of money. In fact, Jesus, uh, the lifestyle that he lived, I mean, Jesus didn't have a home, guys. Um, and so 
Um, when he came and he said, hey guys, I'm the savior, I'm the Messiah, a lot of people didn't believe him because they thought, how are you going to get us out of exile? How are you going to save us from this state that we are in right now? But here's the thing, is that he was not what people expected, but he's what the people needed. And he's what we still need today. And he taught us more how to live in exile. Like he taught, um, hey, you're living. Uh, he, Rome was the, was the people who had Israel in captivity at the time. Um, he said, hey, you're living for Rome. So pay taxes to Caesar, obey the law, uh, be a good citizen of Rome, but know that your main citizenship is in heaven. Know that you belong in heaven. Um, and so he taught about that, but he, and he provided a better way of living, um, but he also told us that he is the way. If we look in John 14, 1 through 7, we see Jesus talking to his disciples about heaven and about how heaven is our home. Starting in verse 1, it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That where I, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And then Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? So Jesus talks about heaven. He says, you guys are going to be there and you're going to know the way. And Thomas says, hey, Jesus, how do we get there? We don't know the way. Um, and Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus tells them where they're going. He tells them, hey, heaven is your home and how you get there is through me. See, Jesus is the way out of exile and that's still true today. See, without Jesus, I want to be straight up with you guys. We would live in a world with no hope. And without Jesus and, and him providing this way for us, life would be that we are born, we live, we struggle, we die, and then we fade to black. That would be life. But Jesus offers something greater. If we have a relationship with Jesus, then we know that we are able to have a home in heaven. That heaven is where we will spend eternity. And so God wants to bring his people back to him. See, God didn't just send Jesus to teach um, about how to live in exile, but he sent Jesus to send his people out of exile, to bring them back to their true home, to bring, to bring them where they belong. And so he provided that way through the cross. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he took your sins, he took your shortcomings, and he paid for them. You could not pay for them on your own, but he took them because he loves you, and he took them upon himself. And by what the cross means is it means that our, our Lord of our life, the King of our life, should not be all these other things in the world. It should not be the Babylons that we see today of popularity, of fame, of being talented, of being athletic. Like those things are, are fine, but they're not what we should live our lives for. They're not what should be the king of our lives. And by Jesus dying on the cross, by Jesus rising again, he's showing, hey, I am the son of God. I paid for your life, which means it is mine. And so I should be the Lord of your life. I should be the king of your life. Nothing else will satisfy you, but only me. And I will send you out of this exile that you're in, out of this, this strange land that you are in, that we call earth, and I will bring you back home with me because you are a part of my family. And as we see here, God provided that way through the cross and he's inviting each and every one of us saying, hey, you don't need to conform to the Babylon of this world now. You don't need to fall into the way that this world wants you to live. What you need to do is you need to see me as your Lord. You need to see me as your King. But here's the thing, as we live in this world, Babylon is convincing right? The, the, the different sins, the different idols that we could chase after in this world are so convincing. There's so many pressures and things pulling at our worship. We should be worshiping God, but we end up worshiping sports. We should be worshiping God, but we end up worshiping uh, popularity or, or anything else. I mean, all these things pull at our worship. But I want to ask you, who are you going to live your life for? Are you going to live your life for your own success? 
Are you going to live your life for the glory of God? Are you going to live your life for the one who paid for your life? Because guys, God didn't just die on the cross. Jesus didn't just die on the cross for your sins so that you can go back and live the life and worship the idols that you have. No, he paid for your life because he wants to keep it. He wants to keep it for the rest of your life and bring you back to him. See, Jesus has called us to a higher living. And so by us falling back into the idols that we have, falling back into the way of the world, um, we are showing that, that what Jesus did on the cross doesn't mean anything. But no, Jesus has called us to something higher. He wants to be the king of our lives. He wants to drive our lives. And so how will you respond? Guys, I want to offer this opportunity because right now you might be sitting there, you might be thinking, man, Jesus isn't the king of my life. Jesus is not the Lord of my life. I have been, um, I have been falling into the way of this world um, and I have not been living a life that I should. And I want to make that decision to follow Jesus and make him the Lord of my life. And so right now I want to give you that opportunity. And so um, I'm going to pray here in a second and you can repeat these words after me. Um, hopefully your mic is muted so that you're not distracting everyone else, but also we want to hear if you're praying these words. Um, and so, um, yeah, and if you want to give your life to God right now, then all you have to do is pray these words with me. And so I'm going to pray and then I am going to uh, say a few more things. So you can repeat after me this time. God, thank you for making me. Thank you for knowing me and loving me. God, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I deserve uh, to eternal death. God, but thank you for loving me regardless of my sin. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross and pay the price for my sin. And I believe that, that he was the son of God. And I believe that he rose three days later. So God, I believe in you. Please take hold of my life and lead me throughout my entire life. Help me make decisions based on you for the rest of my days. In your name, amen. All right, well, if you prayed that prayer, that means that, that, you, that Jesus is now the Lord of your life and you have a home in heaven. And so that is awesome. That is something worth celebrating. And please, please, please tell your leaders um, and tell your leaders that, that you've made this decision. Maybe you uh, have made the decision before, but you've been falling away and you just made that decision again to say, hey, this is real. This time it is real. Um, then, then we also want to know about that as well. And so guys, this has been a great time going through the Old Testament with you. I know that, I hope that you guys learned a ton, but I know that I learned a ton going through all of this and preparing these messages and just hearing from all these other great people that we've had up here, guys. And so I hope that this is not the end for you and that you, yes, you went through the Old Testament with us, but that you still want to, to dive in yourself. Guys, because the important part of our growth, a lot of times we can learn at church but it's so important to learn and grow um, individually because God has something that he wants to say to us specifically. And so um, I want to challenge you guys to be reading your Bibles every day, to be diving into the word, to see how God um, wants you to live and what the calling that he has on your life is, guys. So I love you guys so much. It's been an awesome time going through um, this half of the Bible and I cannot wait for the rest of it. So have a good night, guys.